Good morning, and welcome to First Lutheran Church, where we gather together to praise God. We are here as a community of faith to sing, to pray, to confess our sins, and to share a meal together. We are glad that you are joining us. If you would like a, a pastor to visit, we would be more than happy to come and see you. Just call the church office and we will arrange a time. Again, thank you for being a part of our worshiping community today at First Lutheran Church. God's blessings. Good morning. Welcome to you all. It's good to see you here. Um, my name is Ken Smith. I'm the interim pastor for a while here at uh, Janesville, and it's good to uh, just see you all. Most of the material that you need for your worship service is printed in your bulletin. You'll need the hymn book for the hymns. The announcements are printed in the back. Uh, notice the First Fest is coming up. Mark your calendars for that. There's just one service on that Sunday. And we'll begin with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. The hymn is Gather Us In, hymn 532. Not 
Out in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all peoples together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. We continue with the Kyrie found on page 147 in the front of your hymnals. And our um, hymn of praise or song of praise will be on page 149 immediately following. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. This Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and God of the foreigner and outcast, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of Christ to love the world so that your name may be known throughout the earth. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. I uh, asked if I could tell a little story before I sang this song today. And I'll have a little different twist in here today because everybody was in their cars this morning. So growing up, my parents loved music. My dad loved to sing. Hence, I guess, why I'm standing here today. But um, we were, I was the baby of five, 
and when we were in the car driving anywhere to any family gathering, the hymns were always what we sang in the car. And this was always my dad's favorite song, and so this was the first one that he would always sing. So I asked if I could sing it a cappella without having music behind me today. So I'm kind of hoping that uh, somebody's up there singing with me today. So um, I thought what I'd do is I would sing um, three verses and maybe uh, go back and sing that first verse. And if you'd like to join me, please feel free, okay? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already he come, tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you for sharing your gifts this morning. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 56 chapter, and it can be found on the back of your bulletin. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. We continue with the psalm, and you'll have to turn back inside. We'll be reading it responsively. It's on the white page, the first white page, Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The 
May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. And our second reading followed our first reading. It's a letter from Paul to the Romans. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Here end our lessons. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. This summer we're reading, in fact, the entire year we're reading from the Gospel of Matthew, and we've made it to the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Well, grace to all of you in peace. I've been here a month now, and so I guess it's time to actually preach. <laughs> as many of you know, I'm here as the temporary interim pastor working in administration and coordination of parish life for a short time, really, until the congregation's future staffing becomes at least a bit more clear. Most of my work is spent in meetings and conversations and thought about how we are doing or what we should be doing, and writing memos and communications, studying budgets, spreadsheets, workflow, and project development with staff and lay leaders in administration. But in the end, I am also a pastor, and so once in a while I should preach, especially since Jim Johnson is on vacation. <laughs> he is my friend, and he is gone for three weeks, and I will preach this Sunday, and Peg will preach next Sunday, and then I will preach again Labor Day weekend. Now, some of those who listen to my sermons say that I have a distinctive style, while others say I have no style at all. <laughs> and that is okay. I read a thick book once on the history of preaching, and one of the best sayings in the book was credited to a French monk in the 14th century. He said, remember monks, if the sermon is not going well, then at the very least it should be short. And so I'll try to keep this short enough so that if you are at the drive-in service, you won't need to restart your cars because the radio is wearing down the battery. Now a person like me looks for pattern or structure lying in the background of the stories of the scripture. That's just who I am. I don't really look for the eternal truth of the universe, nor do I spend that much time focused on a theological truth that might be applied to your life or mine. 
nor do I try to apply our politics to the text. I usually set aside all of that and look for the structures, patterns, and, and human behaviors that are embedded in the story. Now, there are several patterns to work with in the Gospel of Matthew. Let's begin with a pattern that shapes the action in the reading today. First, there is a challenge or provocation. And then there is a withdrawal or a negative reaction. And then there is an engagement or some serious work that shapes a new possibility. Challenge, negative response, and then engagement. Here is a three-step pattern that happens over and over again in the stories of Matthew. And we could spend more time on this, but why don't you take out your Bible when you get home, dust it off if it's been a while, and read some of the stories in Matthew for yourself. You'll see this pattern again and again. Challenge, negative response or withdrawal, and then engagement. In this story, the provocation is the challenge or demand shouted out for healing, called loudly by the Canaanite woman. How does Jesus react? He withdraws in a negative way. Sorry, he says, you're not in my target audience. Nothing I can do. But her persistence moves the story into the third step of the pattern, into engagement. They talk. Jesus is impressed. The faith of the woman prevails. Healing possibilities are expanded. Challenge, negative response, engagement. It's how the little stories and also the bigger story of the life of Jesus move along in the Gospel of Matthew. And in our lives too especially if we are members of a Lutheran congregation with a Norwegian heritage. Somebody says that the steeple needs to be painted. And then there is that second stage grumbling about how much it will cost and, and do we really need a steeple anyway? That always happens. And then the folk start to sit down and talk and eventually engagement brings a resolution. And sometimes the steeple is torn down, and other times it's painted. And sometimes the steeple is the surprising first step in the congregation's renovation of not only a building, but also its spirit, as it faces a series of challenges, negative responses, and engagements, through which, by means of the faith of its members, the revitalization of the whole congregation becomes a big story told in the community. Your teenage son wants to borrow the car for something that sounds suspicious. And so you respond, of course not. But then maybe as you talk, it is time to begin that walk or drive into adult responsibilities. Your spouse says from now on, you need to eat low-fat cheese. Of course not is your response, but, but, but then as you talk, as you listen and learn, you come to sense the love and the life that matters more than any Wisconsin cheese ever could. Your financial planner says you need to move and to have more risk in your portfolio in order to keep pace with the future. Of course not, I don't want to do that, is your first response. You, you hate risking your principal. And then, as you talk about it some, and she finds the right mix of risk and stability for you, you continue to develop with her continued growth along with income. So maybe after you dust off your Bible this afternoon, think about how we all respond initially in the negative to the challenges we face. Even Jesus does that. 
And then we get into the engagement that is needed for resolution. We're human beings. That means we will always respond to the challenge with resistance and withdrawal. And then by faith, we move along solving the challenges we face, not with prepackaged or predetermined solutions, but with honest engagement that leads to healing resolution and wholeness. Now, if you have a bit more time this morning, I'd like to get into one more pattern in Matthew and in our life. Eventually, all human communities have in-groups and out-groups, people who are on the inside and people who are on the outside. And there is always tension between these groups until a greater vision is engaged. The pattern is this. We all are together loving Jesus and feeling wonderful about everybody and then divisions form. Some are on the inside, others are on the outside. Disagreements grow until, until a greater vision starts to pull people back together again. And this story is part of that pattern. In the congregation of Matthew, there are at least some who feel that they are the insiders and some who feel they are the outsiders. The church in Matthew is not Norwegian in its heritage, it is Jewish. So the Jewish Christians are the ones who are the insiders. The Gentiles, represented by the Canaanites in the story, are the outsiders. This is a story about that tension between the in-group and the out-group in the congregation of Matthew. The Gentile outsiders feel like the Jewish insiders get all the good stuff, and they are left with only the crumbs. And the Jewish insiders feel like all these newcomers are too rowdy, don't know how to behave, really, and don't understand the faith very well. But the community healing takes place when the groups focus not on their differences, but on what binds them together into one community. Their faith heals. Their faith in Jesus. A lot of different people make up the church then and now, and the only thing that holds us together is our faith in Jesus. Her faith makes her well. Faith, hope, and love propel fractured communities, congregations, and yes, nations, and believe it or not, even families, through divisions and discord into the resolution of healing. They start with a lot of negative huffing and puffing with what their respective groups see as important. But they end with something that is bigger than both. The graceful acceptance of someone who differs from me. It takes a big heart and lots of faith to get there to shape life around this pattern. But if there ever were a time when we need that kind of process, that kind of heart and faith, it is now. And if you are caught in the pattern of divisive discord, well, take a step back and a step away from the rightness of my own position and a step toward the loving righteousness God has given to even my wayward neighbor through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And that gets us to the most mysterious pattern of them all, the movement through life and then death into new life. It turns out that our whole being is patterned after the one who leads us through division and discord, challenge and negative responses, brokenness and heartache. 
into those solutions and healing that reveal a mysterious figure waiting on that horizon where the struggling possible meets the unknown eternal. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we use the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin to confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those who are still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. God of all, we pray for those in need of healing and hope those hospitalized this week, Jackson, Melissa, and Jack. Those in hospice care, Diane and Doris, and for all of those who face illness and pain. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, we pray that in our own lives and in our common life, 
we may hear the voices that call to us for hope and unity in times of division and despair. Help us to be sensitive to those who differ from us in circumstances and opinion so that we might together find solutions and new possibilities for hope. Lord God, friend of those in need, Lord, in your mercy. God of all, we pray for those most vulnerable, those in need of food and shelter, those facing financial hardship, those struggling with mental illness or difficult family life, those who are far from home and see no way back, those needing to find new places in which to begin new lives, and those facing war and violence, that we respond with hopeful words and helpful hands. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, we pray for your church and this congregation. Even in times of transition, may we strive to be your people, doing your will, serving others, and offering learning and praise for those who call this place their home and for those who are with us for the first time. Give us patience, wisdom, openness to others, and prayerful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbors. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share signs of that peace. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, when we share the presence of your love, as the grains of wheat once scattered to become a fruit. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become a fruit, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the distribution. Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. 
Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, dear Lord, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of bread and wine. And we pray that you increase in us faith toward you, love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we have a closing hymn. 537, On Our Way Rejoicing, two verses. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.